Hi, I'm Dave, and welcome to my garden. As you can see, my style's a little eclectic. Uh, I was in the nursery business for years, so, and I want every plant. And so here we are. And, and besides that, I want people to see that you can do great things without grass. And so, you know, a grassless landscape that's interesting, full of pollinator plants. That's what this is about. And uh, I have all my neighbors stopping by every day, talking to me, watching bees. So anyway, that's where we're at. And we're gonna walk around today. We're gonna go look at the succulent garden and uh, show you some more stuff. Let's go. So yes, flowers is really important. Um, gotta learn how to do them so that they, lots of the things carry over into the different seasons. You have overlap. You know, usually in the spring, you know, everything goes boom, and then, but we try to hear, my idea is to have something interesting, and the goal isn't necessarily to have flowers, it's to have something interesting. A variegated plant, uh, an odd looking plant, things people can get a little jazz out of. So, moving along, uh, we have, you know, a nice porch full of plants. I don't miss a spot. If it's there to put a pot or a plant, we do it. More on the ground. So work them on in. This is the beginning of my succulent garden here. Uh, this whole landscape, front and back, were installed about four years ago. Um, it was designed with different areas in mind and one of them was a cactus garden. So a friend of mine, uh, this guy here, and another friend of mine, the bottle pond down there, uh, agreed that we'd go in the ground for the first time in 40 years. And that's how it began. So we'll talk a little bit more here as we walk through about how to create a garden like this. And it's, it's really not that difficult. Uh, you know, a little forethought about what you're doing is the main thing. And with cactus and succulents, I'm going to answer this question early so that everybody's got it in their mind. What is the difference between a cactus and a succulent? So a cactus is a succulent, a plant that has cells in its body uh, that store uh, water. It could be the roots, it could be the leaves, it could be the flesh of the plant. Uh, that's the main characteristic. It's not necessarily spines or certain appendages. Now, what differentiates a cactus, a succulent, from other succulents is the fact that they have what's called aerials. Now, we're getting real technical here, but they're just little cottony, white, often, sometimes really small, sometimes very easy to see. And from those little puffy spots can come spines or glockets, which are those real nasty little things you don't want to get in your hands, or even flowers. So we'll show you a little more later, but that's the difference. And they're all in that Cactaceae family. First thing we did here was to, I have fairly well-drained soil, but we want excellent drainage. The fastest way to kill succulents is to have poor drainage and their roots sitting in water. Water mold fungus will just take them fast. And so what I did was we rototilled this whole thing, we had soil all over the place, and we got these lava fines and we mixed those in at a ratio of about half and half. So we had a lot of leftovers, so <laughs> uh, we mounded that up. And then in the mounds, we planted our big specimens first, and then we put in the big rocks, and then later on, we filled in with smaller rocks and smaller plants. And the fun thing is, is that if we get tired of something, well, we'll farm it out. Maybe give it to a friend and put something new in. So it's, it, it's, it's a game of gardening, just like you would if you had a perennial garden. 
Uh, but the drainage thing, key. The rocks, I have hiked many years in areas of the desert and you'll see rocks like these. You'll see big cactus growing right in them. Yeah, there's various leafy plants like the yucca. Uh, I used to have a uh, desert mallow, which had beautiful little orange flowers. Uh, things like that, they're very drought tolerant. This is a great way to have a really fun looking area. And I water this once a month in May, June, July, August, maybe September. That's it. Whatever else it gets comes from nature. So, uh, you can get flowers, beautiful flowers from uh, lots of different cactus. Uh, this is a choya, careful, uh, and he's got his one last flower here today, unfortunately. And uh, the trichocera is here, uh, beauty named Flying Saucer. We were one day late, but we'll send you some pictures for the website. <laughs> Anyway, you can see I've kind of got a menagerie of things, and that's the uh, that's the problem with being a collector. You just want it all. So that's how we kind of got this started going. You know, this will this will keep your water budget down. You don't have to have the whole house in cactus and succulents, but some people do. Now, they are also extremely great container plants, and as we move on in, you're going to see. Uh, various plants either in small pots or in large containers usually if uh, you've got a lot of plant that's ultimately getting it larger keep moving it up and eventually you'll get something big like we've got out here with the um, beautiful nice big this used to be aloe it's now Kumara plicatilis it's a fan leaf aloe, and uh, these get beautiful spikes of orange flowered, uh, s s flowered uh, spikes, and the hummingbirds just love them, uh, among other insects. You know, you, I go out here and I come in the morning, and the morning that those trichocerus bloomed, uh, they were the first, they were just open like a tube. And already the bees were running in and out, running in and out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they're pollinator plants as well. So they have their time, just like a lot of other things. But you can see I've got a lot of things here. These are mangabis and another agave, you know, the aloes. There's behind over here, we've got some different kinds. And then if you pan over to the uh, table, I had an old barbecue here when the house was uh, on years back and at first I thought I'd make a new barbecue out of it but it didn't seem to work because I kept putting all my cactus on it and a lot more of the collection actually will reside over here in the little greenhouse where we overwinter uh, a lot of these more tender cactus um, so probably you're asking yourself well how can I take care of these things uh, how do I get started in, in, in a collection or just having some around? They are a pretty easy starter, but the key things to remember still in the ground or in a pot is excellent drainage. Um, and uh, most of them don't need frequent watering. They need to let them dry out well and then uh, fine, you can go ahead and water thoroughly and then wait. I tell a lot of newcomers to cactus and succulents that if you get that urge to water, don't. <laughs> the first thing we want to talk about is potting soil and you want a potting soil that is very well drained and really actually low on the organic material uh, factor. Like most potting mixes that you buy uh, for house plants or for just regular general planting around your house are heavily organic like core or compost and those sort of things uh, which really is not exactly what cactus want so I make my own soil and this gives you some idea of the kind of things that you'll want in a uh, soil and so we have a few samples here uh, like a 5 16 lava rock 
some finer lava rock, and then some uh, potting mix, just any old potting mix. It's, it's just the organic factor is there. And these are in thirds. And this is my, everybody's got different styles, different ways of growing. As far as watering, uh, the majority of cactus and succulents can be watered considerably less than say your flowering plants and uh, some of the kind of things that you might have in, in pots like ferns and so forth. Uh, for instance, in the garden you've seen so far, the, in the ground, I water once a month as I explained, and these pots, uh, only again in those warm months of the year, uh, they get watered every two to three weeks. And they get pretty dry. And you might even see a cactus or a succulent shrivel, but that's okay. Uh, as long as it doesn't shrivel down to nothing. But they can actually rehydrate when they get some more water. Yeah, also, I'd like to talk a little bit about container gardening. Uh, as you can see, I didn't have a lot of room to plant back here. A little bit on the edges and a lot of brick. So, uh, in order to have that lush green look, uh, I chose to use containers. Now, um, the good thing about taxes and succulents in containers is, again, they're very thrifty on the water. So, I'd say that at least a third of the potted plants you see here are cactus or succulents and that kind of helps keep the water use down so if you're just starting a collection or a garden you could get into maybe just an all succulent uh, type of thing maybe a few pots of flowers to just augment you know give you a little splash of color here and there and that'll keep your water bill under control yet you'll have some very interesting things going on in your garden um, off to the side here, if you want to flash over there on that fern, this is a staghorn fern. It's about 47 years old. Um, I always like to show people this because I know the nurseries sell them. They're small and they look kind of, uh, what is that thing, you know? But over the years, uh, I've kept that growing and growing and it's what I consider a nice vertical use of space uh, to give you a green wall if you want to call it that. Uh, maybe we've all heard of green walls where you can plant uh, things on a trellis or there's little pockets that you can fill with mix and put in cactus, succulents, ferns, whatever you want. Uh, I've seen them for sale real nice systems that are real easy to assemble and you can have irrigation go in them if you like. So that's that's a separate type of container but it still gives you uh, some options for small narrow spaces and uh, again that was giving me a lot of vertical. Um, you know we, I, I try, try to layer plants in um, Again, being very eclectic about plant material, it's always got to be something cool. Anything from kind of like a bonsai kind of thing to the begonias for color. Um, even these fuchsias here in Sacramento, they're, this particular fuchsia is very easy to grow and it doesn't mind the heat. Uh, another begonias and just some background shrubs in one of the few ground beds I have back here. <laughs> And uh, we're, you know, we've got a pretty full space. Uh, yet, we manage to get 40 people in here once in a while. <laughs> anyway, that's some ideas that uh, not only for helping out your garden in terms of a small space, but, you know, how to do it with a little less water. <laughs>